uh, warm as originally posted. Brownsburg Water and Sewer District. The inhabitants of District Precinct of Brownsburg Water and Sewer in the state of New Hampshire qualified to vote. In, in the District Precinct, affairs are hereby notified that the annual District Precinct meeting will be held as follows. Originally, it was time 6.30 location Riverview room, which was the upstairs hall, but since then it's been transferred to this room. Uh, we've had several, as you all know, we've had several delays because of the coronavirus. We finally are here. Maybe we can get some presented for that. Now, one of the first things I want to do is set up the moderator's rules for the Rollins of Water and Sewer District meeting. This is not our average every year meeting by any means. And we've, uh, when I say we, the district has uh, gone to a lot of effort to make sure it's done right. Now, uh, due to the public health concerns as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, the district has consulted, consulted with legal counsel, the New Hampshire Municipal Association, the New Hampshire Secretary of State's office, and the New Hampshire Attorney General's office to come up with a procedure that ensures that all residents can both participate in the discussion of each proposed warrant article and vote on each warrant article as may be amended. In a manner which ensures every resident can vote safely, each vote is counted correctly, and no resident will lose their right to vote due to the fear of attending an annual meeting of the district in which more than 50 residents may be present. To accomplish this, as a district, Moderator, along with counsel, I have prepared these proposed moderator's rules for this meeting and ask you, as district voters, adopt these rules under RSA 40 colon 4 1. Step 1, which is kind of deliberative session, annual meeting, Wednesday. June 24th, 2020, 6.30 p.m. This is the deliberative session. American Legion Main Room, Fountain Street, Rollins, New Hampshire. During the first session of the annual meeting, district residents will discuss and debate, deliberate on each warrant article as part of this, is, this, as part of this discussion, I will ask for the meeting to approve the final wording of each warrant article to be placed on the unofficial tally. It can be amended during this period. The table ballots to be prepared by the clerk for a vote during a second session. Please note, this means that during the first session of the meeting, which is tonight, you will only be voting on the wording of each warrant article to be voted on. The actual vote on each article will take place July 1st, one week from today, 2020, at the polling station to be set up in the parking lot across the street from the Legion. And the map, a map attached. See map in step two. Nominations of district offices are also made at this meeting. But voting for offices, Article 1, will take place the following week as described in Step 2. Ballot voting on warrant articles. Wednesday, July 1st, 2020, 4, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Voting session, American Legion parking lot across from the Legion Foundry Street, Bronx, New Hampshire. Drive in. Drive in voting. Right. During the voting session, a drive-by voting procedure will be set up 
for registered voters to check in with supervisors of a checklist and vote on all warrant articles, including voting for officers using unofficial ballot. The main reason for this is a lot of people don't want to come down here. They'd be in the crowd. Some can't be down here. The purpose of the second section would be to allow each resident to vote on a paper ballot prepared by the district clerk based on the wording of each article or an article approved during the first <coughs> deliberative session. Voting will follow the procedures of unofficial ballot voting set forth in the RSA 669-54-60 to and RSA 670-17. This means that your vote on the unofficial ballot that determines whether each article passes or does not pass. Voting for offices will also take place at this time on the ballot. RSA 669.55 requires that you write the name of each candidate or person for whom you wish to vote. In order to win an office, a candidate must receive a majority of the votes for a certain office. RSA 669.60. Now that's the voting procedure. Step three. Announcements of results in the joint. Wednesday, July 1st, same day as the drive-in voting. 8 p.m. here at the American Legion, main room, County Street, Rollins. Following the close of the voting, ballots will be counted by the moderator and the supervisors of the checklist, and the annual meeting will be resumed at 8 p.m. At that time, I will read the results of the votes taken on each foreign article, including election of offices. After reading the results, unless there are questions concerning the results or other business to be considered, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. Please note that under these proposed rules, in the event of a motion to reconsider any unofficial ballot is approved, actual reconsideration will occur at an adjourned session of the meeting under RSA 40 colon 10, i.e. at least seven days after the date on which the motion to reconsider was approved with notice of the date, time, and place where the adjourned session is to be held, given by announcement prior to the close of the session at which the motion to reconsider was approved and published in a newspaper of general circulation in the district at least two days before reconsideration. I know it sounds complicated, but I would propose motion by the district. I move to approve the above rules for Bronford Water and Sewer Annual Meeting set forth above and to limit reconsideration on said rules and voting results as provided by RFA 40 colon 10. Second. There's been a, a motion. Heard the motion. There's been a second.
more able body in the morning uh, to attack. So that's one. I don't know how you'd like to you want me to propose all four and go from there. Could you put that in, in writing and bring that up here, please? So I want to make sure we get it right. Also included in there is a um, request that there be an opportunity for in-person voting as well as um, drive-by voting in those extended hours. Okay, I understand the, uh, the motion is to the actual vote on for office of one articles will be take place here. That's what you want inside this room, as well as drive-by for those who are not in. Or which are not able to come inside because of COVID. In the main, okay. The actual vote of the offices and warrant articles shall take place on Wednesday, July 1st, in the main room of the American Legion or the gymnasium of the Rollinson Grade School, if the Legion room is unavailable. Due to the COVID-19 emergency, no one ten voters will be allowed into the voting area. The time. Voting should also be made available without, without entering the building. Voting shall take place from 11 a.m. through 7 p.m. Is there a second? I'll second Would you say your name, Rick? Tom Coons, Slackdale Circle. Um, outside, the 
people who no. are not in vehicles can hand off ballots as well as no. folks who are in cars can hand off ballots. It has to always be in sight. So, so, so you're suggesting a ballot box is outside them, but someone could come in and fill it out inside. Is that what you're saying? That, that, that would can you talk to the supervisor? One box. One box. If that is the requirement. Okay, we, uh, uh, we understand, I guess, what you want. You have some comment to make? Your name, please? Nancy Quebec, 93 Jungle Books. Oh, Jungle Jumps all the way. Um, and supervisor of the checklist, of course, I would have to be here. And I would like to recommend her amendment's great. But like you said, we have one ballot box. We have three supervisors. We have to check them in and check them out and we have to count the ballots. We can get in more than 10 people here. I would suggest that we move it off in here. If this room's available, if not in the school. That's all I wanted to mention. Correct me if I need to make anything. questionable as to how that would go. 
I'm sure our attorney can tell you more about that, but that was the whole reason the drive-by went through in the first place. So there's no question if you're worried about contamination, you're worried about being around people that might be sick, that's not an issue. They go in, they go out, and that was the process, and that was the idea behind it. If you have two places, now you don't even know who's counting the ballots, how many ballots are coming in, and as has already been stated, the moderator has to be there to keep track of the ballots, checking them in and checking them out. So I don't see how that works, but it's up to you, I guess. Hi, Allison Kelly. Um, I was just wondering if you could describe the drive-through process, just some of the logistics of it, um, so we could tell how comfortable we are with that process. Um, will people just drive out, then be handed the ballot? Do you go park? Is there going to be a whole big long line of cars on Foundry if there ends up being a lot of people at once? Um, can you describe how the process will unfold? Essentially, there's a map that shows this parking area out here. You can accommodate quite a few cars. And the drop up with the pickup of ballots and the drop up of ballots is quite a distance apart. Um, and if necessary, you can extend it further up the road so that it will accommodate quite a few cars. And then people tend to sit in their cars, fill out their ballot, then move along with their car. Now, I, I have to have a point of order, though. Uh, multiple, well, first of all, does that ex answer your question? Um, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. We now have multiple conflicting amendments. Correct. We have one that says, let's have two places. Okay. We have a, you, there was an amendment to have inside and outside. Is that correct? Inside and outside, as well as an extension of hours. Well, we can't, yeah. we can't have two voting spaces because we don't have enough supervisors and we don't have enough battle boxes. I understand that now that that's been explained, so thank you. Okay, so you withdraw your original amendment to have two voting places and say, let's have one, but have it this way? I withdraw for both two locations. And? He has to withdraw a second. second. However, with extended hours of that one location from 11 to 7. Okay. Why don't we vote on the extended hours first? Do a little housekeeping, shall we? Back to you. Okay. So we're going to be voting on the 
amendment has been withdrawn. So we're going to vote on this amendment. The voting shall take place from 11 a.m. through 7 p.m. Correct? Correct. Second. Okay, everybody, all you, you got your card? When you need some towels, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Can you repeat the motion one more time? Emily Porter. Just to change the hours from 11 a.m. through 7 p.m. That's a long time, but. <laughs>
the easiest, most workable approach under the, all of the circumstances. Caroline Kendall, we indeed do not have the official ballot referendum adopted in the district, which doesn't allow for us to follow that provision in the RSA. However, during the pandemic, the AG's office and Secretary of State's office have made clear that essentially this body can adopt the rules that it wishes to adopt. Although we have an unofficial ballot, that doesn't mean that this body can't approve of the idea of having names on a ballot. The RSA would not allow for a deliberative session or drive-through voting, and yet we're doing that because we're in extraordinary circumstances. And so I would encourage the body here to vote for the process that you might have. So, if we nominate people tonight for essentially five positions, we're speaking their names out loud, and if this were the annual meeting, we would be voting on each of those five positions separately, individually, either in a secret ballot or hand raised. Between now and next week, everyone here and those outside of here would have to know who all those people are. So I'm not certain how memory is going to carry forward from a meeting that is attended by 80 people and a voter base of considerably many more than that. So where do those names get published if you don't publish them on a printed ballot? I am concerned about how that will play forward between now and a week from now when all the names are announced tonight. There will be nominations and people will get uh, nominated for those positions. Um, that, that, that's another good question and we, and we did give some thought to that. Um, the, uh, the nomination process using an unofficial ballot doesn't really mean anything. Of course, normally you do it all here today in this room, but when we're breaking it up, which is it's consistent with the meeting statutes, it, essentially what you do is you can always have write-ins. Even if someone's not nominated, you could have like five write-ins for someone who wasn't there and wasn't nominated. All that really matters is the name that you write on the ballot. The, the answer to the question of, well, how would someone know, how is someone going to remember, um, it, you know, people can go, and obviously, the, you know, you, when they enter the an election using an official ballot, there's always people holding signs, um, that type of thing, and you can you can do all that in designated areas, and so that would be one way if that was a concern, just to just to do that. So it's really you go in, and it's almost like every person, regardless of what happens here, it becomes a right in. Tom Boone, Stockdale Circle. So based on this logic. There'll be no names that appear on the ballot at all. No names. So, is it not the power of this voting body to change that? So, if we were to put together a motion as was already presented to have the names of the folks that are nominated tonight, what would be the what would be the uh, reason not to. If it's been voted by this body, based on what Carolyn is saying as well, that there's the the, uh, the state is giving a little more latitude now, given these different circumstances. What would be the reason not to have the names vote listed on the ballot that are voted here tonight? It, it, it's just because the law says you can't do it. Um, that's the only uh, you know, the, the other latitude and stuff, that's all things that are Who the, are you? Justin Richardson. Um, I'm the district's attorney. I've been working with the district for about 10 years now. Um, the, the only reason is, is because there's a statute that says you can't do it. So, I mean, you, you know, I, I, I get where you're coming from, and, and I'm not prepared to say you couldn't do that, but it, where the law says you can't, 
it, it just makes me uncomfortable. And, and I think at the end of the day... Hold on just a second. You, but you just said to, you said there's nothing saying you couldn't do it. Uh, so other, than, other than the statute. I mean, uh, so, so it's a very nuanced issue. This okay. district has adopted in the past what are called non-ballot voting procedures. So normally you do this, and that is a procedure that has been outlawed in towns for over 100 years. The Secretary of State's office has an election manual that's 350 pages long. It doesn't even mention it because I don't think they know it happens. Um, and I've, I've spoken to the Deputy Secretary of State about it, the Attorney General's office. They're kind of, you're, you're in uncharted territory. So, you know, we turn to this and say, let's find a procedure that works. And there's all these laws, even the statute that says that the district hasn't adopted official ballot, use an unofficial ballot. So we're trying to get a model where there are rules and guidelines. And then if any, you know, if you had a vote and it was really close and it was challenged, someone could say, oh, this statute was violated. And then you'd be stuck with, you know, the, stuck in court arguing over the result. So the idea is just follow the statute, you know, we did what it said, and, and that's simple and you know, essentially unassailable if this would end up in court. So based on what you're saying, your interpretation of the RSA is the statute, any person who is voted on tonight, it's almost as though the vote never took place. That's right, because normally you don't you do it all in one meeting, and you don't actually have to. You, you could just have those up. You could have those. You could have people discuss things. I mean, you could have people debate about why they want to run for a particular office. But we're trying to set up something so that what really matters is is just the ballot vote, and that's that's a consequence of that. Is that the nomination process is really superfluous. Uh, Pine Street. Um, as we just learned tonight, because of COVID, we can make a decision as a body to change the way that we do our voting. And as Jennifer made a motion um, to do that, you said we weren't allowed to do it. And then after our town administrator spoke and clarified that we can, in fact, change that, um, our lawyer, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what your name is. Um, Justin. Okay. You said that. Yeah, we could change that. You questioned whether or not our town administrator had actually made a motion to do that, and Jennifer did. So I'd like to propose that motion be held and voted on now. Is it just to warn articles? 
and then we fill in the candidates. Is it a blank piece of paper? And we just um, give it. And what happens if a candidate, we can't spell their name? Um, do we get our vote thrown out because we miss a letter or it's unreadable? I think putting the ballot together with the names on it in a uniform type and right in below it would allow clarity and less guessing on the part of the moderators and the people counting the ballots. Mr. Moderator? Jill Gallant, 432 Spruce Street. We spent about 35 minutes on the phone yesterday with uh, Bud Fitz from the Secretary of State's office talking about um, the moderator's recommendations. And he made it perfectly clear to me that the state of the Secretary of State and the AG's office are only offering these as guidelines. If the members do not like the guidelines, if they don't agree with them, they have the right to say we don't agree with them, not to vote for them, and we have the right to make a recommendation that you change them. So that came from Bud Fitch's mouth yesterday. Mm -hmm. Emily Ford, Sackville Circle. Can you provide the statue and read the statue in which you, lawyer, can say that it would not count if we put names on the ballot, if it would be illegal? Can you read that statute to us? And second, um, what prevents us, or what legally can be thrown out if we don't have that seven-week window? Because we're having a week window, will it be legally upheld if we have printed ballots with names on them? Does that make sense? My question is clear. Thank, thank you. And, and just, just to clarify again, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying that Printing the names on the ballot will, will cause it to be automatically invalid. Um, it, it just, it, it's just, it, it's just a violation of the statute. I think if this meeting wants to do that, I, as I said, I think when a gentleman spoke before, I, I'm not prepared to say it would be illegal or it would be unlawful. It just, it just violates a statute, and sometimes uh, that's. You know, it happens, you don't like that, but that's um, not necessarily the end of the world. It's only a concern in a really close election. Um, your second question was... Um, if we have printed names on the ballot and we don't have that seven weeks, like you said, will the vote still count? So, so the, the, the reason... For, oh, 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 without the... Yeah, no, no, that, that, that's fine. You, you'd just be adopting a procedure. The procedure would contradict the statute, but I don't think it's clear that it would be uh, it, it would be illegal. I'm not prepared to say that it would be. So if that's what the meeting wants to do, I think you could do it. You just have to know that if someone were to change it, you know, somebody could hold up the statute and say, Your Honor, this is what the statute said. That's not what they did. And they think they are. And then you'd be kind of in court over it. Hopefully, the result's clear and that doesn't happen. But isn't that what we're here in this meeting to do, is to say what we want, and wouldn't that be our legal defense in court? I mean, it's just speculation at that point. I mean, if this is what people want to do, they should vote to do that. If they want to follow the proposed rules, they, they should vote for that. I mean, I really can't. Um, I can't guess what's going to happen afterwards. Short Street. I think what the people are trying to say back here is that we, yes, we do want to have the names put on the ballots for many reasons, especially the fact that if we're having the drive through, there are people that are not here. There sounds like there's not going to be anywhere that the names are going to be printed so that the rest of the uh, residents know who they're voting for. So this is imperative that we do this. The motion's on the floor, it's been seconded, and I believe it's time to vote. Thank you. I'm going to call the question. If you vote for this one, it would be put out the names written on the 
about. Right? All in favor of doing that, raise it. Cut. Okay, that's passed.
we get clarification on who counts the vote? Who counts the votes? Who counts the ballot? Denise Mills of the street. I thought it was my understanding the monitor, uh, the moderator monitors the counting but does not participate in the counting. They don't at the town side. The, the moderator's role is really as the, the, the supervisor of the meeting, the announcement of the results. The, the you know ideally you know the supervisors with the checklist and the moderator are all working together. Um, so it's not really a question that uh, normal, normally comes up or doesn't you know dealt with. It's um, it, it's really just one process. The moderator's there. You know it happens basically during the meeting. It happens in public. So people could come in here and sit and watch. Obviously, you know, the, you, know you can't stand over them or interfere what they're doing. Um, and you know, you, the ballots are ordinarily confidential um, because you know people could read handwriting and stuff like that and do those types of things. So um, that's how the process works. But is the moderator supposed to be counting the ballots with the supervisors? Because the moderator is supposed to be a mutual zone and not. I didn't believe it was supposed to be. It has to be there, that's all. Right, so you're not going to be counting them. Right. Ms. Moderator, you're not going to be counting, you're just going to be monitoring. I don't know what I can do anymore, I can tell you. The moderator will be there when they're counted. But you're not going to count. Yes. You are going to count the ballots? Say again. Are you or are you not going to count the ballots? I'm not physically. I'm going to just monitor the counting. Thank you. Chris, we need uh, Pine Street. Um, I just wanted to clarify the time that we're going to be counting the ballots. Is it going to start at a specific time? And is there an end time for this to happen? Because what I don't want to see is 8 p.m. it starts to happen. Because you said you can 7 and 8. So I just wanted to clarify that. When are you counting the ballots? What time? Is there a time specifically? Whenever the last ballot's cast. And when will the last ballot be counted? Is there under, understood that when it's done, but I'm hoping that there would be some sort of a time frame that we can have as residents to plan for ahead of time.
what if the commissioner shared that there would be double counting um, and that the, the vote, the ballots would be declared once both the supervisors of the checklist and the moderator count the votes and they are equal. That's what Vernon said. So I just want to confirm that that is not the case and that the supervisors of the checklist are the only folks who are counting the ballots. They'll do a double. And the moderator is overseeing it. Yes, the moderator will oversee it. The general custom for God knows how long was that two people separated count the ballots, and then they come back together and agree that that's the number. It's the same as they did tonight. They count the number of people who registered, then they compare their numbers and make sure that they did it correctly. That's what we're talking about. It's double counting. But the supervisors count, not the monitor. The supervisors are going to count the ballots. I'm not going to count the ballots. I'm just observing that they are counting it properly. We're just looking for clarification. Thank you. So I will, if that is the process, then I will. Nancy, you there? Oh, I was hoping everybody could hear me because people are concerned about me getting close. I don't think they can hear you. Can you go to the mic, please? Uh, okay. Nancy, for the 93 General John Sullivan Way, we're all Hopefully you can hear me. So I can explain the process. When you come, you, we're going to check you in, and when you leave, we're going to check you out. Then we're going to compare those books. Uh -huh. Then we will separate the ballots. Well, we don't need to separate them like we have in the town. Then we will proceed to count the ballots. Then we will proceed to do our checkups. Okay? Very good. It's, it's going to be Susan. Angela and myself. Correct. And you're welcome to watch us. Don't feel bad for us. Thank you. And thank you for putting the name on. All right. So I will withdraw the motion. Thank you. Withdraw the motion about. Well, that gives us clarity. I'm sorry, about who's supervising the supervisors and what the process is to count the ballots. Are we ready to vote on the rules? Yes, yes. Please. Emily Fork, I just have a quick question. Is the location still drive by voting or is it yes. in the building? That I don't think I understand. Drive by voting. Okay. Are we ready to vote on this? Yes. Hi, sorry. Um, Allison Melody. I'm wondering, is everything on a single ballot or would we drive up, are they handed separate ballots for the different board articles and elected positions? I don't know if that's been discussed yet. We're just voting on the rules of the moderator no, 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 no. right now. We're going to go over all the warrant articles. Well, I'm wondering about the ballot itself that folks will be handed in their car. Will you be handed multiple pieces of paper, or is it everything going to be printed on a single ballot? The ballots will have the information on them. I, I know how, that. How we, how we end up with the writing on each one article will be on the voting. Yes, I understand that. I'm wondering if each individual word article is on a separate piece of paper or if people are handed this one. They'll be all on one sheet of paper, yes. Except for article two, they'll be all on one. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, let's move to questions. Uh, on the motion, on the moderator's rules. All in favor of. As amended, of accepting the moderator's
moderated the rules for the three sessions. Please raise your hands. That's a majority. Okay, that's the majority. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we can get into the Article number two is long-term borrowing. 
to see if the district will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $200,000 for the purpose of one replacing a water line on Bully Street to $120,000 within the district, and two would be other upgrades and improvements to Porter Well, $30,000. General Sullivan Well, Wells, $17,000. The third would be the Associated Engineering for such projects, 33000 to authorize the insurance issuance of not more than $200,000 of bonds or notes in accordance with the provisions of the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33 and RSA 33B, and to authorize the commissioners to issue and negotiate such bonds or notes and to determine the rate of interest therein. The intent of this article is to authorize the district to raise and appropriate the sum of $200,000 and the actual amount of each recommendations required. Uh, recommendations required a two-thirds ballot to be approved. This has been recommended by the commissioners and has been also recommended by the budget committee. Do we have a motion to accept? Motion to accept. Second. Okay. Yes. I have a couple of questions. Bill was second, yes. Are we accepting this as written or are we accepting it for discussion? I think it is reserved, yes. I would like to ask some questions before you we... You can have questions, sure, go ahead. Uh, before we accept it as written. I would like to know how long this long-term borrowing is going to be. It's not stated in here. I would like to know the average cost to taxpayers. I'd like to know who we're borrowing this money from. Is it the bond bank like the town did? And why are the commissioners in this process? Have they already started the proposal and reached out to different agencies. Let's see if we can ask them. <laughs> okay. By voting for this, you authorize the commissioners to issue and negotiate such notes or bonds and to determine the rate of interest thereon. So that's part of our duty. Okay? We suspect it will be fairly cheap because the cost of money these days is pretty low. But that's something that we can't tell you in advance. We're probably going to go with a bank because we have more flexibility. But we can't tell you what the final figure will be. Have you started the process? Yes. And have, who have you contacted so far? And, Berkeley Bank. And what is the length? Is it a 20 year bond? Five years. 30 year bond? Thank you. I think that will work. Are there any bond on the comments? Or? I have Jennifer Lentz, Prospect Street. I have a question about the engineering plan or to be designed, is it just Lily Street, or is it Lily Street and the connecting roads prospect, I think, was the one that was um, of concern, as well as Locust. So is the project plan for just Lily Street, or other deteriorating lines as well? Would you would you kindly repeat that, please? Hi, my question is: Does this warrant article extend? The, is it just Lily Street, or does it extend to the other uh, streets, Prospect Locust, that were noted as deteriorating in the prior engineering study? Lily Street is the only street project. Okay. Prospect and Locust actually are functioning just fine. 
So the rumors and stories you've been told that they're ready to die is untrue. Okay. Thanks. I'm sorry, but I don't think I got an answer to what the expected impact of the average payer would be in my previous question. Do you know that? I'm just a little disappointed because the previous commissioners were able to give us an estimated tax impact of everything, and so does the town. So I would like to amend this, if possible, to put a maximum on the long-term borrowing of no more than 30 years. No, he said 30 years. Put the writing agreement down here for me. I'll write down. No, you said five. Okay. Anybody, you can, in the meantime, you can speak. Hi, Allison Kelly. I'm wondering if the commissioners have already um, signed a contract with the Ted Berry company. They had, that was the one company that they had discussed working with, um, but I was wondering if that actually is it a done deal or is it still open for other bids and other methods of pipe replacement? Yeah. She's the only one you contacted. My question is, did you already Sign a contract with Ted Berry to do the pipe bursting? Is it still possible to explore other options of just full on pipe replacement? I didn't know how far along the process you all have gotten. I was curious. We've talked about it with Ted Berry, okay? They've given us a rough and dirty estimate, nothing firm. We haven't signed any contract with them, and we can't until this passes, okay? There's no other company in the Northeast that does this type of work this way. Is that true? Because when I was speaking with Cindy Clevens at DES, she said this has become a more popular method of late, so I was, would be surprised if there was just a one company in Lewiston, Maine that does it. Do you have another company name and contact? I don't, but I could, I mean, I could ask her. I'm just wondering if you did contact DES and discuss or look for other names besides, I know you had said in a prior meeting that this was the one company that came up in a Google search, but I was wondering no. if you did, you did say that at the no, budget hearing. I did a Google search, I found companies in Missouri, Texas, and Washington State, which kind of is kind of far away. Okay, so how did you find this company? Uh, we, I called HTA and I called, um, can't remember the other company. And they said, these are the guys that do it in New England. Just this one company? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, Gallant, 432 Spruce Street. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember sitting here in a meeting with the town officials talking about, and Caroline was, I think, answering our questions. And it was mentioned that this money had been appropriated in a uh, previous warrant article and voted on by the members, but the commissioners decided that it wasn't necessary. So I think that's true. I think that's what happened. So if you didn't think it was necessary then, why do you think it's necessary now? Why are we voting on it again?
comment, not a question. And I'd like the commissioners, we're all ratepayers here. My name is Emily Cork, Southdale Circle. We're all ratepayers here, and we all deserve to be treated kindly. And your tone has not been kind to these people who come up and ask questions. So I really appreciate um, a kinder tone from each one of you, especially you, Vern. So I was asked to put my Warren article in writing. I would like to change the last line. The intent of this article is to authorize the district to raise and appropriate these funds to extend no longer than seven years. Bring out. No, 
because right now we don't have surplus. When the budget is approved, there will be surplus, you're telling me? There could be. <laughs> Only when you have all the expenditures would there be a surplus. You can't tell when you're proposing a budget that there'll be a surplus. Otherwise, you haven't done the budgeting process correctly. Well, I think you I, I think you can answer. I, I can't answer any better than that. Okay. He said he's going to try. I've been told that before, Mr. Schnorri. So do I need to make a motion as the budget changes and we allot a certain amount of money? And how much money would that be? You're the commission. You can make a decision so we have the capability of communicating with people. I think the email is great. We try to shift some money around to take care of that. I mean, but more can you say? I, mean, I don't so know. You shouldn't have a figure even on how much it's going to cost right here, right now, right? All I'm asking for is a commitment to change some of the money into a line item. You can create a line item. You can do that maybe next next year. <laughs> I'm trying to prevent some of the problems that we've had this past year. Bob? Um, how many, how many, um, what would you say, 570? Not, I'm trying to answer his question. Thank you. All right. How many do we have? 570? We have 570 meters. Okay. It's not 570. I understand. Tables. I understand that. So it would be no more plus or minus. 1,200. Okay. So 1,200. How many do we send out a year? Send out postcards. Mail. That's what he's asking about. How much of the mail is. We, we send out cake. How much of the cards do we send out? I'm not currently doing billing, so I can't answer that question for you. Okay. Okay. So we. So how many times a year do we do emergencies? Because so four times. So a couple grand. It's probably a couple grand. I'll make a commitment to that. Just to send out a card. You're you're asking about the question of whether the. People that don't have email or what have you, where they're going to get notice of a water shut off. Is that what you're talking about? No, not a water shut off. If there are issues like previous, the recent issue of hiring a company, of letting people know. And when I brought it up at meeting, why can't we let rate payers know? It wasn't, it? and I continually said there's nothing on the website. This issue came up during the virus. And from what I understand, I don't think anyone knew. Well, a lot of things went out the window with that. And then just like this meeting, this concept of the drive-by, um, the attorney spent a long time negotiating that. I understand that. That's water under the bridge. But, you know, meetings, I'm sure we could send something out to the rate payers telling them that. But that's going to cost ballpark about two grand a year, based upon what I'm going to be told here. If the rate payers want to go with that, I don't see a problem with it. Personally, who knows about me here this year. <laughs> At any rate, I think it's a good idea. So are you making a proposal or making an amendment to allocate the $2,000 in the... No, I'm just budget? telling you my personal opinion. Okay. I'm willing to go with that. Alright. So I'm not quite sure what needs to be done here. Motion. You were making a recommendation to the judge. They said they would try, right? It was just a recommendation from you. Well, the commissioners would have to rearrange the budget now. I don't understand why you can't move two thousand dollars out of whatever line now and say it will be for that. Because you can move it back if you don't need to. If the email works for everybody. Why? I just don't want to. Be the excuse to be what I heard for a year, which was a non-excuse, 
I didn't take it then, and I don't take it now. And I don't take the condescending tone of Byrne telling me, I'll look into it. I've been mocked at these meetings. I've been threatened to have the cops called on me. And Byrne, I don't appreciate it. I think Sorry, probably, you're probably out of order pushing that point. They've already said that they're going to make an attempt to get these more information out. So I think that's about as far as we can go. Thank you. Okay. Next. Hi, um, Allison Halliday. So the budget was drawn up and approved or recommended by the budget committee and the commissioners prior to the hiring of the New England Service Company. Um, so I'm wondering how that $133,000 contract fits into this budget. Um, so did you have to cut other things in order for that um, large amount to make its way into this budget? even prior to it having been approved by the district members, because um, there wasn't an approved budget when the commissioners made that move. Well, I'll give a little background on that if you want. That'd be great. All right. What happened was, with this whole COVID-19 bowling that's going on now, it's affected everybody. I was talking to DES, and we talked about the many problems we're having at the plant, and covering everything we had to cover. And I asked some specific questions. They came back and told me on Manning what they suggest we should cover. Mm -hmm. And we had to talk to an attorney to decide how we could handle that situation. And that's what we did. We made some adjustments, some realignments. And that's where some of the money is coming from, from those realignments. Okay? Okay, thank you. Um, okay. Hi, right, Wendy Chase from Short Street. I just um, I'm curious. The attorney, you said that the attorney had to uh, negotiate for the drive-through voting. What what did that cost, and who were you negotiating with? And also, I don't understand why if we've got 560 rate payers, why you just can't ask people, would you like mail, email, or a phone call to be able to be notified of what's going on? How simple would that be? Put it in with the bill that you're sending. That's it. My comments. Thank you. Okay. Was it just? I think it's a good idea. All right. I think it's a good idea. It's relatively easy. I was ready to vote on the operating budget. Hold on a second. Huh? The wording of the operating budget. No, I need that one more. So in this budget, how much is, uh, well, first question, how much was spent total last year Legal fees. How much was paid last year? You have no idea? No idea. What's your vague idea? 30000 How much is in the budget this year? your proposed budget for legal fees this year. Can't hear you. Twenty-three. 
Hi, I, I just have a follow-up question to the legal questions. Um, I seem to recall the first virtual meeting the commissioners, I thought, signed to go with a different attorney, um, something to do with a conflict of interest, but I think you're still the original attorney that had been with the district prior to that, um, that paperwork being signed. I'm just wondering if we can, why are you back? No, disrespect, I'm just curious, it just seems strange because I remember that meeting happening. All right, now we've got a motion to change the bottom line of the budget from 722 to 727585. Is there a second? There's two at the post of the mail. Can't put that. Everybody understand that? Say it a little louder. That last part. Are we ready to vote on that? Can you read it again, please? Okay. Just a second. You need a second? No. Jill Gallant. Um, I just got no copies of this budget. I'm confused because there's no ex there were no expenditures for police in the uh, year 2019. I know that you paid for police to come down and uh, make sure that the peaceful demonstrators didn't hurt anybody. So there's nothing budgeted for police, but yet you've already spent money for police in 2020. Why is that not in the budget?
And that's it in a nutshell. When you're negotiating a contract, for example, we'll say he was my lawyer, okay? And all of a sudden, I get into a car crash with her, and he's now got to pick. He said, wait a minute, she's also my client. You can't have the same attorney for multiple clients. If there's a conflict, and frequently there is a conflict because they might know somebody, there might be something else going on. There's neither hire nor fire. We didn't hire or fire. Different attorneys have different things. I use several different attorneys all for different things in my businesses. And it's not that one is better than the other, it's their specialty area. And that's what it is. His specialty area is what he's doing right now. That's why we hired him. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I didn't understand that that the Shaheen and Gordon firm was brought on for a particular purpose. Thank you. Is the Water and Sewer District eligible, like other municipal government agencies, for COVID-19 funding? I know the school is getting COVID-19 funding, and maybe the town. I'm wondering if this body is able to get COVID-19 funding to offset some of our legal fees for the this meeting and the drive-by vote. Here's that. Basically, the sewer district is a support function, the water sewer district is a support function of this whole COVID-19 to make sure that your facilities are running, your water was there, so the health and safety was kept on going. If we expended money above and beyond, we probably could qualify. If we haven't spent any money above and beyond. It's all within our normal operating expenses. So I say no to your answer. Your question. And since this um, official budget has not been passed by voters, but is being expended currently, is it being expended currently? So we're still running on money left from 2019? No. Okay. Same thing the town so does. We have not authorized the commissioners to spend the money in this budget, correct? RSA 32 provides that if a budget is not accepted until the new budget is accepted, you spend at the same rate and amounts you did in the prior year. And that's mostly because we pass our budgets in March, but our fiscal year ends in December. So we've got a three month gap. The basic rule is pretend you're still on the same budget. Okay? RSA 32. So since this meeting has been pushed back, the voting's been pushed back until July, we've been spending from January to July on the same rate we spent in 2019. Correct. Thank you. Are we ready to vote on the... The wording of the budget. No. All right. Another question. Does the default budget need to be in there if this pack fails? A default budget only occurs in the community that has passed SB2. Are we ready to vote on the wording? Alright, I'm gonna Yeah, are we ready to vote on the wording of the budget? It would be and the new wording is to authorize the commissioners to raise the appropriate the sum of seven hundred and twenty five thousand twenty seven thousand five hundred and eighty five dollars for general municipal operations, which is the operating budget. This article does not include appropriations contained in a special or individual article addressed separately. Are we ready for the vote? Vote on the wording. All in favor? Please raise your card. That's passed.
that's okay. Now, the vote on the budget. No. We're done. No, we don't want to. That was right. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. Here we go. Twenty-five pounds. Oh. Article four: Sewer Capital Reserve Fund. The city of the village district will vote to establish a sewer capital reserve fund under the provisions of RSA thirty-five colon one for the repair, improvement, replacement of sewer infrastructure. The name of the commission is agents to expend and to raise the appropriate and appropriate the sum of twenty-five thousand to placed in this fund. Funds to be raised by fees for sewer services. Recommended by majority vote is required. This is recommended by the commissioners. It is not recommended by the budget committee. If you look over there, you'll see that part of that is in red. And the reason for that is when I when I developed this, I was just grabbing boilerplate from DRA, and it had that the commissioners would be agents. I didn't feel comfortable with that, and so I shared my discomfort with the budget committee, and I said, what we really need to do is take out that, that wording in red and let the legislative body, which is you, decide how to expend that money and not the commissioners. That's why it's there. And I would ask someone to make an amendment to the wording to strike, to name the commissioners as agents from this Warren article in wording. Second. 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 I have a question. So you're putting up a Warren article. And you want us to amend this warrant to take out, to name the commissioners as agents to expense. So you want the, the voters here to have the power to tell you how to spend that, that money. Right. Is that correct? Yes. So let me ask you a question. Why wouldn't you ask the voters how to spend $133,000 oh. on the contract you signed. What's the difference? Uh, it's within our government's authority to do the contract. This is a foreign article, this is separate. Yeah, I understand that, but you're, you're looking for us to give you, you know, to approve $25,000. I think it's important. But it's a reserve fund, not part of the budget. No, I understand that. I understand that. But, they, but it's I, just I, like the town operates that way right now. They put money into the fire department for new trucks that may come up or new equipment that they need. And then when they appropriate it in the budget, or put it in the budget, they'll say we'll draw from the capital reserve fund. If I'm not mistaken, though, when the fire department or the police department needs a new cruiser or new equipment, those things generally find their way onto a warning. Is that not correct? Yes. So why wouldn't that $133,000 contract find its way onto a warrant? It's not a capital item. Does it necessarily need to be a capital item? So it needs to be a capital item to be a warrant. That's not a capital item. That is a capital item because it's putting capital aside. But it's not a capital item. It's not, it's not a capital item. I guess it goes back to the question of why wouldn't you have brought that large contract to the voters? Why would you not have brought that to the voters? Because within the authority of the government's That's not what I asked you. My question is why wouldn't you bring it to the voters? Why wouldn't you want them to have a discussion about it? It's a lot of money. Do you not know the answer? No. Don't even. $133,000. This is $25,000. Okay? This is like apples and oranges. This is a separate deal. Except that it's part, but you see, you're asking us to, to 
vote on these things to send them forward. I get that. But you bury this $133,000 elephant in the, into the, the operating budget. So there's no discussion. Nobody can talk about it. This is different. This is different. Thank you. What we're doing here right now with this capital warrant is putting money aside to offset costs, future costs, to the district, either the water or the sewer. We have two items here. Let's look at it. When you start talking about what we are allowed to do as commissioners, it doesn't call for this bird to be right now. Okay? What you're talking about, what the commissioner did was something they had to do not to meet certain requirements. Period. We're allowed to do that. To keep this thing safe for all of us. And that's what we did. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you can't compare this to this. This is what money assigned for a specific fast later on downstream. What you're talking about something that doesn't pertain to this at all. All right. Hi, Jill Gallup again. Um, I can only relate to this in the fact that I managed uh, condominium associations for 20 years. And most of them, not all of them, but most of them have a capital reserve budget. I don't know if the state of New Hampshire requires a percentage of your condo dues go to that reserve. I know the state of Florida does. I know it's not the budget committee's recommendation that we have reserves, but I find it, I just find it irresponsible that there are no reserves in this water sewer district budget. That there's no money anywhere in capital reserves. So I guess for once I would have to probably agree with the commissioners that we need a capital reserve. Budget committee only speaking to the microphone. What's in red? They objected. Burn the microphone. The microphone. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Um, but so you're, the budget committee only objected to you, to the commissioners having control. Okay. But I, again, I urge everybody to vote for a reserve budget. That's an amendment. That's an amendment to the amendment. 